Uh, this is a day that I've been waiting for uh, for some time. There are about a dozen sites uh, in the city uh, that just devastated Detroit's reputation internationally uh, for And Fisher Bob at 1975 and of those sites, it's one that shows up in every national gallery, the ruins of Detroit. The history uh, to the plant, the Fisher Brothers in Detroit, uh, built bodies for ho- horse-drawn carriages. And when the horseless came along, they began uh, building bodies there and ultimately partnered with General Motors uh, to run a LT. Uh, and they the plant in 1918. So close to General Motors, it ultimately took over the uh, body company, uh, ran until 19 when it finally closed. And other than a brief period where a paint company is there, it's basically been abandoned for 30 years. The city of Detroit has owned taxes for the last 20 years. And people in the city know it as a place where when you do the 90, 75, it's the big building with the graffiti all over. Uh, in the first few years, a lot of time, rough and the uh, graffiti. But we try everything to get a used plant. I went to uh, this historic We could in single time. We went to land an auto supplier or a distributor. We showed them the plant. They all said it was going to work. And we proceeded to start a process uh, to demolish it and get rid of the eyesore. And then a couple of years ago, Jackson came to me and the economic development team and asked us by saying, I want to talk to you about the Fisher Body 21 plant. You're wasting. We've talked to every manufacturer, every distributor, nobody. Says, You're doing this all wrong. Nobody pulled up multiple levels. He says, but this close to downtown, midtown, new center? He says, how? And I have to say, all of the times I had looked at that plant, never once did it occur to me that I was looking at the apartment complex. This is this. And Jackson had been anybody else, I would have gone forward with. But Texas credit, the business uh, running a lot of uh, apartments, uh, knowing right? he said, we stopped. And he brought in his partner, uh, and they said, we want access, we want to go through and do due diligence, et cetera. And so the reason we did not demolish this building three years ago was because of the credit of Greg Jackson. Uh, and every time he got through another state testing and he says, I think it work. Uh, here we are today where he has got again to bring 100 units uh, to a that are going to set aside 20% of them as affordable uh, and take a historically significant building uh, and make it a permanent part of Detroit's start the process. Nothing's easy in Detroit. Uh, and there's going to have to be significant assistance in this. In Detroit, you've got community benefit. When you're talking $105 million investment. We're going to start this this month. Hopefully we get results. Uh, fair way bring. And if we get council approval, uh, you could see them start work uh, even next year. It is just very exciting. I'm able to say Historic land uh, put it to work uh, for the residents of this city uh, for decades to come. Uh, so, let's introduce the main plan. I'm so excited um, about this project, about the support that that the mayor and his staff and the entire city of Detroit has uh, is giving us concerning this. Born and raised, um, I always say Linwood is my home. And I do it to Central High. It is um, to be a leader and to invest in the city, which lives in the city. The history of this that about years ago, um, 
my partner and I, Mr. Hosey, he'll talk in a second, were standing on the Detroit Riverfront and enjoying the view and got to talk and say, Richard, you know, we've been looking together. Uh, what should and Richard says, are you from Fisher 21 plant? And I decided my his life both interestingly driving with the retirement uh, said let's start investigating this. We know this will work. The thing is that we've taken three years, we've done extensive environmental surveys, we've done extensive engineering surveys, and very to popular we the building is more than stable, more than capable. As rock redevelopment. Good news that uh, help the city come up with a plan to in $35, a substantial amount of that personal cash out of IPOC, our pockets, along with uh, incentives with the city, hopefully the state, and develop property in 435 apartment, loft, loft style apartments, of which 20 be uh, that 20 square feet of space, 10,000 feet of communal space, uh, workspace, and and just reactivate the entire area known as Milwaukee Junction. This uh, facility serves, serves as a connect between known as the end of Detroit and the Institute of Arts area of the Midtown, that whole area. So being there, waiting to be to the rest, we're proud of developers to do that, especially people who are in Detroit. Some have, and um, we are also proud of the fact that being native Detroiters and being an African-American-led project, that we're proud of the fact, and it'll be, Sign of things to come, letting others know that they can also use help, also types of things. So, Ed, let me bring you on uh, conversation. Good afternoon. Thank you. Um, I was thinking, I was thinking about uh, kind of the history that we've had over these past uh, years, and I, I thought um, twenty. When uh, the mayor and and council president came into office, and what people thought of <laughs> Detroit, yeah, that you know that too much to ever be clear. <laughs> never get a any neighborhoods in Edison would never be able. Um, reminded me of some of my uh, 11, 12 year old that ever you know, with a person, place, or thing where people tend to have bias against. You have to always question the negative things you hear, because it's just too easy to to malign something that already has bias again. Um, you know, twenty fourteen neighborhood or city council uh, just be done in our church project, large industrial buildings, city of Detroit, and one so much. Everybody said it can't be done. It was just taken for granted. It can be done. Um, and so, you know, with uh, my fellow believers and, <laughs> you know, Greg, you know, on this, um, we thought, mm, let's question this. <laughs> There's a lot of bias against projects. And um, we did. And, and we knew that we could do the floor work. And, and then the questions were true the horrible goals and structurally sound and, you know and so we investigated that and then and with the support of the city and the city council we we were able to just keep forward and make time uh, to and and so we know it's viable uh, more than that you know that being possible is that a gym happened up a park, a park, a half acre, and 
churches, which everyone knows and loves, is 1.2 acres. And what we have is the roof of this building is, is two acres. So we have this four feet in, in the sky, Martians plus. Um, you know, you have windows that are not tall and 20 feet high. Look like amazing views just way down. So we, we believe we'll check the rumors, the rumors of, uh, uh, out there about the and so we're just we're just happy that we could have been there and uh now we're surrounded by just incredible partners in in the the main planet the economy the city council um m e d c v um and then a day you know, kevin uh, you see there with uh you know it happened so this viable be be viable uh, infrastructure is just to have it. Um, so thank you. And with that, I'll bring up uh, our wonderful city council. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you, Annika. <laughs> what a great day, historic day is uh, of Detroit, and for this summit to be in the heart of uh, amazing district, present district. I want to. Uh, Greg and um, and the development team, their vision, submit their fight, importantly their commitment because I know um, redeveloping an industrial site is difficult. So I want to thank you for seeing this through to fruition to where we are today. Uh, the plan to redevelop a 25-year-old decay of systems disinvestment and of, frankly, uh, to now level of hope, opportunity. Progress signals where the city and system in place right in Detroit. I have all firmly the belief that we have in our community to build and sustain our city and that Detroiters can be the architects of our future and also the city's revitalization and resurgence. And the announcement today, as we heard at Jackson, Detroit, Linwood, by uh, this is solidifying that we Detroiters can. This city. Uh, this development is one of the African led developments today is historic. I'm also here. This touches what I believe to so many leaders repurposing a historic uh, property, uh, creating affordable housing, having a Detroit based African American led team that is dedicated to Detroit in city council, which means for Detroiters and also creating retail shopping for Detroit to be able to shop locally. And so this project is transforming. It is going to be a capital spur uh, economic impact in not just that site, the neighborhood around the entire city. Uh, lastly, I just have to say that um, as city council, I am looking forward to more information coming uh, and that process is respected to our due as more it comes to ensure uh, that Detroiters do benefit from this particular development. And then as well, this does community business process, and I'm looking forward to it and uplift the voices of those who are directly affected, make sure that their voices are heard and incorporate the design ultimately the that we see here. So as I said, I look forward to working again with the developers, the administration to ensure Detroiters are at the table throughout this process designed to continue to reach opportunities access to quality, affordable housing. And with that being said, we uh, have today, my league member, I know his father fought extremely hard to ensure that developers like we have to uh, build the city of bring up my partner, Coleman Young. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to uh, Mayor Duggan, his council president, Sheffield, on this. And I think it's a brilliant segue into what this is in terms of my father, the young man, young son, who said for not only hiring minority actors, but also making sure that developers were at the table. And I think, kind of like the quote that says, and business are not just fixing being hopes and dreams. And this 
presents a fulfillment of a dream and a promise that has been a long time in the making. You know, this was usually looked as something that would be considered in porn or one of our shame and for us to be able to revitalize this, for us to take from lapidated building to a disbrawling investment, to put it to work. Going to put in people's going to put over people's jobs and opportunities. This is what redeveloping Detroit is all about. And I think that this not all this development not only represents the leadership put together, city, I also think that this is like a where we're going as a city in the future. I think when I look at the ability of people win about shelter and God did. Might have been in that committee. The illegal drugs were dealt in this building. The um were protected in this building. The children that were in this hurt this building. The um lack of pride that people had in terms of looking at this eyesore. And now not only are we this 334 million development that's gonna bring with affordable housing, but we're also doing the Detroit black developer. This next generation. Future and a very part of it. I look forward to with the administration, with my city council, as well as the group of um, Council President Barry Sheffield, in order to usher this through. And um, I'm just very proud and excited as one son of Detroit. Look, I think the job you know, very coming, and I'm very proud to be a part of it. Thank you very much. Council. Thank you for that, and I am so honored to be here, Mayor Duggan, President. It is honor to stand with you and with, uh, with Richard. Um, it's remarkable to be here today because real estate developers, when they're ready to take on a new project, have choices. They have choices about whether a new build on a greenfield is right, or whether a new build on an old is right. But Really, do you developer willing to take an industrial lab in the middle of a neighborhood? And typically, you take it on because it's costly. It's going to take time. It's complicated. It's a big. It's hard. We are really fortunate to have Greg Jackson and Annika, his daughter, and Richard, uh, and working on the project today. We are seeing the visual impact through this rendering of the uh, what this will mean to the neighborhood. I'm going to talk for a second about the economic impact because to be clear, development of Fisher Body 20 means jobs. Jobs for investors, Greg, Annika, and Richard have that commitment. As much into the end our work and the work has already been done, but there is more environmental work, work lead and asbestos remediation. There's interior design. There are going to be administrative jobs to get the project through processes. We're going to need electrical and systems taken out, new ones in. Clear out existing elevators in this structure, and there will be jobs, new ones in. Construction done will be the management job, small business startups, and opportunity for existing small businesses. This is an enormous opportunity for Detroiters because Greg Jackson and Richard Hosey and Jackson have said that it will be. For Detroit, more income taxes paid and more income taxes paid is that there are more new sources of basic cities and the communities that you expect in your neighborhood. But the economic benefit goes beyond jobs. The and co spaces facility are an important part of where work will get done as the future of work continues to unfold. As more companies adopt from work from or work stories, a site where you can live and work and play is becoming incredibly important. Well, it's a good thing in the neighborhood. It's more restaurants, it means more dry cleaners, it means salon, it means gas and e charging stations. At the scale 
development is economic development, and economic development is workforce development. So at ground level, what does all that mean? It means that you can expand the city, you get the opportunities that are coming. Detroit at Work is going to be one place where you can learn about the training that you need, the jobs that are available, the place to get connected. And that, Motor City and Detroit business are going to be ways all business business owners connected to doors in the world that happen in and around the building. And to talk more about the work that happened behind the scenes to get this through, and a little more about the work that's on that front, I'm going to invite my partner, Kevin Johnson, who is president and CEO of Detroit Economic Growth Corporation. Well, and and express uh, to you how excited that um, my I to stay calm. Uh, I had the of working with Richard and Annika. Um, Greg um, is a friend, uh, counselor, uh, and I, I appreciate and respect the work that he's invested in this city. Uh, and what this board uh, is something transforming. Uh, for the first conversation that Greg and I and trying to figure out what's inspiring investment. Uh, we'll hear from Atlanta, the only thing I see development in Atlanta called Pont City Market uh, is Andon Sears and Roebuck Catalog Distribution Center, 3 million square feet. Remember us having that conversation? And Greg, this could be Detroit City Market. And we can create the same kind of and have the same economic impact that that had in Atlanta right here. I walked away and I laughed as in the world has got pull this off. Uh, uh, much uh, surprise and Greg's to now, uh, we're here. And for that, uh, I'm inspired um, as a as a as a economic developmental city at the D. We support the project before, during, and construction. We promote the premier uh, destination for job action and, uh, and business traction. Uh, asset this gives us this opportunity to go to the marketplace and say to them, look at what we got uh, and look at what you, where you could be, look at where you live. This asset uh, against any project in the country because I know that in this team, Kevin Luan, and quality. And that's what we need in the city. We're not down streaming, we're up everything. And that's the development we're going to see take place on Detroit. My first visit to Detroit, I was going to the 7594 corridor. I looked out the window and I said, What in the bleep bleep is that? Uh, and it reminded me, my mother used to drive a two, uh, Buick LeSabre. I remember walking in the door, seeing it was your body. And, oh, that, that's where I'm from. Now, see this trend in the uh, is amazing. We're going to be before, during, and after the construction of this project happens. And we're looking forward to taking it around the world and selling those nationally and internationally as a destination for business. So with that, I want to get back to the uh, if you have questions for him. Anybody have any questions? Two questions. First, um, I know the affordability component. But is it going to be um, aimed at like a certain demographic, like luxury housing? Scale? The renderings look really nice. Thank you. Um, so, the project will other uh, market rate. So we we believe in doing top quality uh, um, for all products uh, for our country, and so you know we. We want to that will really 
specific, so it, it'll have luxury finishes. We've seen a lot of redevelopments at uh, former office buildings um, or housing buildings that become housing. I haven't seen a whole lot recently of former buildings that become housing. Will this be moving there? Absolutely. And so it's one of the interesting Detroit kind of different path of uh, actually start industrial building, office building um, that is in New York. Started with our, our core uh, industrial. It, it's it will be safe and um and it, one of the great things about this project is it actually uh had was taken by the EPA and significant um, of course we've done substantial environmental testing to make sure uh, that is is that with you know a baby it'll be a, a safe. Act three partner in this project. That's Kevin on the come up because uh, Kevin is our construction partner and I want him to speak a little bit to uh, the safeness of this building. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm Kevin. So we did a tremendous amount of investigation in this project. As you know, it was designed to uh, be a center for working via the entire building over Move through the building down elevator Floors in the were designed to carry loads of 800 pounds per square foot. The average residential building carries about 100 pounds per square foot. So the strength of the building is second to none in terms of uh, residential projects. We found that there's little degradation in the actual structure of the building, might cost 10% of it at this point. I'll go ahead and put Together, so we're building this project longer than 100 pounds, but certainly over seven. So it's solid, we'll say. Um, it's a wonderful spot, and again, to speak to the the environmental cleanup, a tremendous. Reason, but we do what needs to be done to make it perfectly safe for everybody. Um, or who field this? Wasn't there a re request for? On this particular and is we've seen old trees and old torn down used as in a warehouse. This is permits. I think the most recent example that we have of something like that is early so proposal for that is the Packer. Obviously, it's not. So why will this one be different? Let me start with this. I didn't do the Packer plant. It was done by a private operator who, hopefully, they were moved in order before the. Regard to this space, I don't know. Did we ever ask the RFP? I know we had people come through. Right. Here's what we uh, took as people through, and my team told me it had to be demolished. Uh, this building had such historic significance that we actually ordered a review uh, and had an engineering analysis done uh, as to what we saved. And and said, basically, you've got to demolish it, which I was very um, happy about, but we went forward on uh, it. And we've had people come through, in which Greg and Richard Holt said, we're going into apartment. I gave them the report. I said, are, are you sure? Look at this engineering study. And Greg said, uh, who are you going to believe, that uh, that document or me? Uh, and pitched the document the trash. And I View. Uh, and after three years of due diligence, uh, they were right. So there's been there's a lot of uh, properties in the past. People have come through the proposals sometimes. Uh, and if somebody uh, the right proposal, but to, you've got three days to make a proposal, the only people you're getting are the people who have to be doing something those 30 days. When you allow projects of this magnitude, people to come to you, Getting the most creative, I guess, is gone out and 16 for an RFP. I doubt I would have seen a from two of them in service of, of this. My last one price for the property, and it's under dollars. So whatever it is for the city, I don't know, five or ten to demolish. Thank you. 
Hey there, this message, uh, this question is for Greg, Richard, or Annika. Can you talk about your feelings of significance being one of the largest developments led by black entrepreneurs? Yeah. Thank you for that question. This is my is incredibly being the Detroit as a resident of the city my father to be leading this project um opportunity that has been to us um to show the love that we have for the city to be able to give back that we love we actually win is uh is absolutely phenomenal and you know i believe that yes, there's some information um but it, Important for African Americans to continue to know that we absolutely put projects like this together. There are absolutely people that come at it, um, and and there are naysayers, but as long as we continue to showcase our excellence, that's through um, current the Lafayette and other that we own, current landlords and and other places, our work for itself. And so it's, uh, it's humble, and we hope that many other members of color are behind us. Thank you. And as a follow-up to that, like, what do you think the message is to Detroiters? I mean, we talked about this being one of the national sort of eyesores of the city of, of blight. What do you think the message is for a Detroiter to see folks like them paving the way for the future? I think the message that um, if you believe you can achieve it, it's corny, but it's um, it takes tenacity, it absolutely, and it takes ownership. That's the other part that's really, really important. We've been talking about this project for over three, four years now, so things are not immediate. But when the time is right, you have everybody able, the opportunity comes together, and it can really be absolutely phenomenal. I would say to work with um, your leader community, it's just body for the it really partnership. And um, any Detroit out there looking to do something really big, make sure you surround yourself with those who are who are absolutely doing excellent things. So thank you. Thank you. Anything else? All right, thank you all very much for being here.